Hi, welcome to the Utuna Zalendo podcast. My, my name is Mwani Mutemu Wakiyama, the host, founder of the Mzalendo Halisi Foundation. Mzalendo Halisi Foundation highlights and amplifies ordinary Kenyans doing extraordinary things. In this episode, we are featuring the remarkable story of James Matt, a leading journalist and one of the trendsetters in the digital space. Karibu. Hi, James. Hi. Karibu sana to the Utuna Uzalendo podcast. Mm-hmm. Thank you for honoring our invite. Uh, the podcast is about telling stories of alternative Kenyan leadership, yeah. uh, showcasing Kenyans who are going out of their way uh, to serve the society, to serve you know their communities, uh, not necessarily because they are appointed or elected into any position or because, I don't know, they are doing it for money, uh, but out of that sense of uh, you know utu yeah. dignity yeah. Um, and the fact that they they, they you know they, they want to, they they belong to those communities and they want to give back to those communities right so, so um, um i've been i mean uh, i've met you several in several spaces uh but let's have this conversation from that perspective of who are you who is james smart okay um introduce yourself we may talk about happy yeah. that kind of thing yeah and, and it's an easy conversation so. all right yeah. um so thanks um my name is james mm-hmm. james smart mm-hmm. i i like to think of myself as a storyteller mm-hmm. uh, because that's really exactly what i wanted to do mm-hmm. and be when i i was growing up mm-hmm. um born and raised mm-hmm. in the beautiful island mm-hmm. of korogosho mm-hmm. Uh, people call it slums. Mm. Uh, I don't think Korogosha is a slum. Mm. Um, the conditions there might look like it's, it's a slum area. It's, mm. uh, there's poverty. There's many things happening. But this is my home. This is where I was born. Mm. You know, um, I grew up in, in Korogosha. Went to school in Babadogo Primary School. Mm. Um, I think I went to school because there was food. Mm. We were offered gideri. Oh, the, the, the lunch. Yes. Uh, they offered uh, hot meals. Gideri. They called it's it the, break or something. It was the only it was the only school then uh, around Korogosho, mm. uh, Korogosho area, because Badogo is in the factory area, mm. right? Mm. So the our parents and people in in Korogosho would go to look for work mm. in in those areas, yeah. Mm. Um, and they would either do French beans, mm. you know, carry cartons, mm. uh, do whatever, do as manual work. Mm. And um, the owners of the factories uh, f- saw them carrying their children mm. all through. Mm. And decided to start a school, mm. um, and then offer the lunch mm. in there so that mm. the children can stay in school mm. as their parents work. That, like uh, these guys went out of their way to set up a school. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Mm. Um, and and so that um, you know Manu Chandler and the rest of it mm. uh, at that time, who are sort of like the biggest uh, people who are in manufacturing. Then mm. um, I remember my grandmother was raised up by my grandmother. Um, mm. She used to work from morning up to 9 p.m. Mm. or thereabouts. Mm. And she would carry me in the back. Mm. And so they needed that that help, mm. right? Um, and so they took us to the school, uh, mm. which had an entry exam. So you had to do certain things. Mm. You had to, first your parent or someone has to be mm. working for one of those factories mm. uh, as a casual laborer. That mm. was the first qualification. Mm. The second uh, was that you had to do some sort of entry exam mm. uh, to show that you have the aptitude to get to the school. Mm. And, and which we did. Um, what would they be testing for? You've not been to school. Before. They're, they're, they're testing aptitude. They're just oh. testing, you know, your mm. ability, your awareness. Mm. Um, they they were looking for, I think, um, children from the slums mm. who were beat, wanted more, mm. you know. Mm. Um, and and because it was a long journey from where we lived to the school mm. was a daily hike of six kilometers. Wow. Um, and so by the time I was seven, six kilometers too. Yeah, yeah, six, six kilometers. kilometers. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So by the time I was seven, yeah. I knew how to navigate my way through mm. alone and mm. come back. Mm. Um, I was very proud of that, mm. you know, ability to walk through mm. the, the slums and then cross over mm. the bridge, mm. get to this area that is, you know, properly built mm. and, and get to school. Mm. Um, and greatest things is seeing electricity for the first time. Mm. It's, it's a beautiful feeling. That was in the school now? In the school, yeah, yeah. yeah. You put on the switch and the lights mm. go on. 
it's a beautiful thing. I can, mm. I, yeah. you, you, you don't know this until mm. you get it much later in life. You know, I know for other people it's a normal thing, but mm. for me, I remember putting on the switch mm. and the lights coming on. Mm. Just blows your mind. Mm. Set up. Mm. Um, getting library and seeing different kind of books. Mm. Um, it's you, you. You start getting lost in this new world of mm. of things. Mm. You know, stories that you can read mm. uh, that are not available to you, mm. right? Um, and then having the lunch. Mm. You know, mm. I don't think um, people realize how important it is mm. for people who you know live in uh, like what Nairobi is mostly. Nairobi mm. is a very it's a happenstance place. So mm. people don't have a lot of permanent jobs. Mm. So there's an air of impermanence mm. in, in Nairobi a lot. Mm. And, and that is sort of like the constant in a slum life. Mm. Um, and so when at that early age mm. guaranteed lunch, mm. uh, which was nothing much, it was Gideri. Mm. So you come with mm. your bowl every morning mm. and then at somewhere at 12, mm. you know, it's filled up mm. a lot of maize and beans mm. and a, a bit of weevils. Mm. Uh, <laughs> uh, animal protein yes there's animal protein <laughs> yeah. very very important mm. um it fills up your stomach mm. you know and and makes then the next afternoon mm. you know um an easy going afternoon i remember many others who would uh, save the lunch for for later because mm. they come from a much more sort of difficult family where mm. they realize that um i have younger sisters mm. or older brothers mm. and they're not able to get the food so mm. they would Put this mm. um, and and take and home. Take it home. And take it home. Yeah, yeah. And and this is a constant. It's something mm. that is a constant mm. that I see, mm. and we've grown up through it. Mm. Um, but for me, what I think those moments offered was um, not luck. Mm. Um, I've never seen most talented people, most hardworking people, mm. uh, honest and loving people mm. than the people that I called family and called friends mm. and neighbors mm. um, every home had very hardworking people you know mm. the father is going out to look for work mm. you know uh, in a factory somewhere mm. and they have to work very long journeys. and there's that impermanence they're not assured they're not assured yes. Mm. yes 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 these are constant so mm. so people have built their lives with this impermanence that mm. it's a constant that today I wake up mm. there's zero guarantee mm. of anyone having a glass of water in this house mm. right mm. so I build my entire life around that mm. um, and and so they would go, the father goes to whatever it is. Mm. The, the, the mother also has to work. Mm. Um, and the unfortunate thing about that is it creates the older sibling mm. to be a co-parent. Mm. Mm. However old they are, mm. if they're nine, they mm. become co-parents. So it mm. means that older sibling will not go to school. Mm. Right? Or if they're going to school, mm. they'll be interrupted mm. because they have younger siblings. Mm. So if, uh, and many times it's a constant that, mm. you know, the older sibling mm. um, is in school or class maybe two or three, mm. and the young one is in class one mm. and she's having trouble, mm. the older sibling would have to leave the class and attend mm. to, this to this one. Um, and, and so that um, explains the next thing, which I think is education, mm. uh, which I think is another sort of misunderstood mm. concept mm. Um, for all of us about the life we've created is mm. uh, we think that we should always give the child who became number one mm. Um, you know, because they've done exceedingly and extremely well, and mm. which they have mm. from the slums, mm. give them the scholarship, mm. which is good. Mm. But then, mm. it's, it's, it's not like an iceberg. Mm. What is done is it's hidden mm. everyone else mm. who supported this one person. Like there's right? a whole community around yes, that, that, pers that person being number one, and uh, including maybe all the siblings yes. who have sacrificed yes. their, yes, their opportunities. Yes, absolutely, yeah. right? Mm. Um, and, and so, so these, these, there's a good thing with that, mm -hmm. but then it's, if, if you live in, uh, come up from that sort of background, mm. you realize how a system that you've created is mm. perhaps for everyone else who hasn't been in that kind of a setting mm. to feel good about themselves, mm. All right? That mm. we took out the best kid from this slum mm. and took them to school. Mm. So I'll feel good about it. Mm. You know, we've paid school fees and all that. I think we should keep on doing those mm. things. But that hides everything else mm. that happens in these places. Mm. It hides the support system. Mm. It hides how the families and the, the unity is set up. Mm. Um, it hides everyone else who's talented in any other way, mm. right? Mm. Um, because I think we maybe now are a bit more accepting that not all of us are academically inclined. Mm. You know, maybe some of us are artists, some of us are footballers. Mm. Um, 
and and it's okay to be average mm. you know mm. uh, this is another thing i think that we don't accept that we look for exceptionalism mm. everywhere and i think we're having that conversation in terms of uh, the 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 colonial setup of the yeah. education system whereby it was set up to actually extract you know to like identify a few people who can who can be good in uh okay in academics so yes. they serve cert- certain roles within uh, the Sad. superstructure yes. the society and yeah. superstructure but that was did not mean that they were essentially the brightest even if they became number one oh. just meant they were good at reading and producing whatever it is that they were reading yeah. based on that system yeah Uh, and there could be other better talented uh, i think that's what you're saying absolutely um so so i to your point and i it's okay to be average mm. um and and life is not meant to be i think an exercise of extremities mm. so there are people who are extreme genius mm. um in many things that they would do mm. and these most of us would be just mm. just about make it you know it's just mm. about made it on the other side you mm. know if we all are supposed to run a marathon mm. we all can't be kipchoges you know just about just about to make it mm. after five hours mm. we'll do it in two hours or less right mm. um and i think that should be okay mm. and i don't think we we we've created an understanding enough to mm. to so that then that has an implication on the society that we create mm. the society then um agrees that it's possible for to fall down mm. but they shouldn't fall mm. further under this so we have sort of like a safety net mm. okay did you have siblings yes i have mm. uh, siblings i have uh, three sisters mm. and a younger brother mm. um they all much much younger mm. uh, my my mother got me when she was 16 she was very ah, young okay. um so she went back to school yeah. and then you know high school yes okay. high school you know mm. and 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 then i had to Oh uh, that's what you're saying you brought up by your grandmother. Yes, by my grandmother. Mm. Yeah. Um she was a community um organizer, mobilizer. Mm. Um one your of, grandma? Yes. Mm-hmm. One of the early uh, sort of community health workers mm. um in Korogosho. So mm. just briefly what happened in Korogosho was this. Um mm. so in terms of how Nairobi is Nairobi is like four corners mm. and all these four corners have huge slums. Mm. Um because it's things had to happen outside the center, mm. all right? So uh Korogosho slum came about because uh of and, and it's further than everywhere else mm. which is why you cannot find it mm. you know it's not accessible like Kibra mm. is not famous like Madare mm. and that sort of thing is very very far mm. so what happened is most uh, the profile of people of Korogosho mm. were mostly single women mm. um because they were sort of like more like the third sort of generation of the people who came to Nairobi mm. um people came to Nairobi first to uh you know allowed teachers mm. you know the people who are serving mm. the setup or the colonial yeah, setup yeah, as you yeah. like or the system yeah. um so this third generation mm. found themselves in Nairobi mm. and they were living in those areas of you know uh, Kayole mm. and and their abouts mm. um and they needed help mm. so you'd find possibly this is a really worker mm. from whatever let's mm. take western and they've come and they have children mm. so what they would do is they would ask their sisters or mm. cousins from the village mm. to bring them a younger person mm. to come and stay with mm. and as it is mm. most of these younger people came mm. and found relations mm. and um they would get pregnant yeah. so they would be just away mm. okay mm. um that formed a part of the population of those people who lived during that time yeah, you know getting uh, uh, pregnant out of it's a big thing yeah, yeah. Big it's thing. a big thing you know mm-hmm. so your relatives essentially want nothing to do with you mm-hmm. and and send those away mm-hmm. uh, the others are the burana community who um had been displaced mm-hmm. um long period of time mm-hmm. and when they came mm-hmm. um the first government the second government mm-hmm. put them in a place mm-hmm. you know somewhere in korogosho which was mm-hmm. very far away from the view mm-hmm. um the second was a huge population of the queer community mm. who are displaced again mm. in those areas of Kiambu and the rest mm. and they're put on the sidelines mm. so korogosho is sort of like a queer word mm. which means put together mm. things that are put together yeah, yeah. just you know mm. um so it's not supposed to be a real place mm. okay and that being the profile of the place mm. um was completely forgotten it's the place that had you no know, amenities you no know, chiefs camp uh, the th- first thing that i think korogosho saw was a church mm. Uh, a bit by the catholics that's a ch- uh, kanyobang the, the, the no no the, yeah. the it's called st john's yeah. catholic church yeah. um and and the karubangi one is outside mm. you know so for the longest you had only the tamak mm. that ends where the slum begins mm. and so you can't access mm. inside the slum um and then there's a church that was built inside the slum mm. the first catholic church mm. i wish tried to put up a dispensary because 
what happened was somewhere in the 90s and the 80s, the AIDS scourge mm. almost took out the entire slum mm. um, because there was no amenities. Mm. And so um, where government officials would have reached, mm. they couldn't reach. Mm. Um, where information was supposed to be to, to sort of to percolate and people know what's happening, mm. that information didn't, mm. didn't go. Mm. So Progosha Slam then took a huge branch mm. of the AIDS mm. scourge in the 90s. Mm. And this is where my grandmother, you know, comes in mm. and the lady called Sister Jill, mm. who was um, a sister in, in, uh, in Catholic. Mm. And essentially what they put was the first, um, you know, sort of exercise mm. to collect information, first level information mm. from, from homes. Mm. So go to each home and find out who's there, mm. uh, sort of like a census. Mm. Are they sick? Are they ill? Mm. How are they feeling? Mm. And, um, and create that. And then the second was to diagnose. Mm. So then... Unfortunately, because what happens with the setup is um, most people in Korogosho die in the house mm. because there's no dispensary. Mm. Um, so that becomes a fairly thing that you learn very quickly. Mm. Uh, seeing more dead bodies than anything mm. else. It by the time, normalized. By the time, it's mm. normalized, yeah. By the time mm. 10, I, I, I could tell when someone's about to die because mm. people go to Tuakoma, mm. you know, mm. um, in the community and it's like, yeah, that person is, is dead. Mm. So then this last caregiving becomes mm. an important thing mm. because... Someone will continue working. Remember, the profile is mm. they're going to, they're working in the factories mm. and you continue working even if you're coughing, mm. even if you're getting sick, you're getting ill, continue mm. working until you cannot mm. leave your house anymore. Mm. And we see this progress. Yeah, we see you getting weaker and weaker mm. and weaker. Mm. Um, and then one day, you, your door is not opened. Mm. Two days, door is not open. Mm. Third day, neighbors will be like, okay, what's up? Mm. They would come, mm. find you possibly in a coma, mm. you can't speak. Mm. They would call uh, my grandmother mm. in the middle of the night. Mm. Um, and then as the young boy, the security with a torch wow. would, you know, go. Mm. Um, and, you know, finding someone in the last moment is uh, it's, it's a complete thing. It's a thing, you know. Mm. Um, they, they, they are unable to communicate. Mm. Uh, so most times people just are looking for comfort, mm. you know, before they go. Mm. And, and that's what she offered mostly. And that's what you grew up. Yes, 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 yes. Mm. Um, so death is is a mm. is, is is a thing, and you make peace with it very quickly. Mm. Yeah, because mm. it happens too often, and it happens uh, in very violent ways. Mm. Uh, people that don't deserve to die mm. die a lot mm. in the systems that were created, mm. um, and they go unnoticed many, mm. many times. Mm. So that that becomes a constant feature. Mm. The next thing is. Uh, you know, women giving birth mm. participate a lot. Mm. Uh, I think because now your grandmother was still yeah yeah, yeah. she was she was yeah. So mm. you're called for the two things. You're mm. calling for people mm. giving birth and mm. the deaths. Mm. Um, and the giving birth one is is possibly the I think the least favorite. Mm. It's it's, it's, mm. it's very it's very harsh. Mm. You the know. pain. It's it's, 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 yeah. it's very it's painful. You mm. know, and and women have to go through this. Mm. You know, every so often. You know, mm. giving birth in the house, mm. um, and and then you know, so the support on on how you know they can you know can push, mm. get the baby out, mm. um, do you know the first first aid, mm. make sure by the morning then there's a proper health professional mm. to come and check them, see the health of the mother mm. and, and the child. Most often than not, mm. you know, nothing else, mm. and Kids grow, mm. you know. Mm. The humans are interesting and mm. serious things. How old they are you at this grow. time? Possibly between seven and mm. twelve. Mm. Yes. Mm. So that 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 happens a lot because um, I sort of like was the only one with her around, mm. you know, mm. moving around and whatnot. Yeah. Mm. And and that um, I think for me gives me, um, I think this sort of reason for how my life then is mm. built mm. because I realize quite often and quite quickly then was that um, education is is a thing yeah mm. and and almost education in itself has nothing to do with knowledge mm. you know, because nothing I learned in school mm. um, was helpful mm. I think it's the awareness because mm. you're being so you're, you're in this immersed in this community where all this is happening yeah uh, but for a period of time you go to, to school yes you escape yes. Uh, and you get lost in the books and the whatever is happening, and then you come back to this reality. So, so you know, uh, you talked about the fascination with the switch, the switch and the light. It's like 
you know, I think the metaphor is that you go and see the light and then you go back to the darkness. Yeah, yeah, mm. with, 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 with our Kuroboi. Mm. Yes, 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 yes. Mm. It, it worked quite well, mm. but it's not the same. Mm. It's, it's not the same. Mm. Um, and I think the, the idea in, in, in my mind mm. is, is that um, the people that I interact with every day as neighbors, relatives and whatnot, mm. they really haven't done anything wrong mm. to be in this situation. Mm. They haven't. They, they're just stuck. Mm. We are all stuck in this maze of a system mm. that is unable to see us, mm. that doesn't recognize us, mm. and in almost many sense we're being a nuisance. Mm. All right. Mm. Many ways. Um, and so... I and think you're invisible to even a lot of the surrounding communities. Completely. You're, yeah. you're, you're, you can't be seen. Mm. You're, you can't. Mm. Um, I remember the first time I think I saw the f- the elections. I think was it the first time. Mm. I, I vaguely remember 92 elections. Mm. Uh, 97 elections, however, mm. I was in class 7. Mm. And I remember that. Mm. And, and I remember seeing politicians coming to the community mm. and the first time hearing the promises. Mm. Um, and I'll tell you what, the sense of distance mm. that those people have mm. and the immense power that they have mm. and you looking at them mm. is such a disempowering feeling mm. that I almost understand why people vote the way they do. Mm. These absolutely they take everything away from you. Mm. You know, mm. they show up, mm. they tell you this is what we'll do. They mm. define the problems for you. Mm. Tell you your problem is you can't have this. Mm. And so this is how I'm going to fix it. Mm. All right. They didn't ask you what your problems were. Mm. And so I have to sit there mm. and, and be like, okay, that's not our problem, mm. but he said he's going to do that. Mm. Understand? Mm. So I have to accept that. Mm. And, and that sense of disempowering, I don't think, I don't think you experience it anywhere else mm. other than in those places where you have nothing. Mm. There's nothing going for you. Mm. You're invisible, um, can't be seen. And it's interpreted you don't have ideas mm. on how to make yourself better. Mm. Or you're not working hard enough. You're not working hard or, enough. Um, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, politics mm. is... is, is um, and at that time, when you're, when you're going to school, because um, you're, you're, you, you said the, the people who got a chance to go to school were the kids of the people who were working those, yes. those, those packaging yeah. spaces. Which means some of your your peers did not get a chance to go to school, and you're coming back in. Yeah. So how how is that interplay? So this is difficult. Um, some of my my very good friends and mm. my best friends even then, um, they're still in the community mm. to to date. Mm. Um, people that I even went to school with, they're still back in the community. I'll mm. tell you what. I remember there's a guy called Hato mm. somewhere in 1996. Mm. He was a very good footballer, mm. um, el- elected by Maisa, um, went on... As a mother of mother, mother, yeah, mother mm. sports, yeah. Mm. Um, real talented guy. Like mm. He was very tall, midfielder, brilliant kid. Like I think um, the national team came to our school maybe twice, mm. you know, the coaches, just to look at him. Mm. Fantastic mm. kid. Nothing happened for him. Mm. Nothing. Mm. You know. Why, why not? Why, why didn't it work? It's the system. Mm. The system just doesn't work. Mm. Okay. This is just one kid who was extremely talented and, you know, and great, but life does what life does best. Mm. You know, it has its own curveballs and whatnot. Nothing happened for him. Mm. All right. Um, I remember a guy called Dan. Uh, Dan would polish his shoes mm. like he was a proper kid. Like we all wanted to be like this guy because mm. mm. his shots were somewhat pressed. Mm. You know, his shots was perfect with the line. Mm. He'd polish his shoes mm. very well, had socks up to here. Mm. Such a clean boy. Mm. Um, we finished class eight. Mm. Um, the next day he was shot and killed, mm. you know, mm. um, by cops. Mm. The, the story goes that the, some of his friends were involved in a hit somewhere. Mm. Um, he hadn't uh, done well after KCP, so he started hanging out with his kids mm. and cops showed up one day and they eliminated of them, mm. you know. Because that, that's the other uh, known part of Koch, uh, Kuragosho, um, is a gang, it's a gangland. Yeah. Um, uh, and up to date, um, yeah. very active. Yeah. A lot of young people die very young. Yes. Um, a lot of people say, you know, there's that, that narrative that you don't steal or you don't, you don't commit crime where you live. So 
people leave Korogosho to go and do things uh, elsewhere and then come back to Korogosho. Yeah. And you kind of like you grow into that life. So these are the guys who some of them you went to school with. Yeah. Someone yeah, yeah. your neighbors, your friends. No, no, no definitely yeah. I like yeah. I I know these people mm-hmm. like like I said it's it's people that I grew up with mm-hmm. and we know. I think your first uh role models in life are the the guys who was stealing with mm-hmm. guns in in the banks mm. and everyone knows who these guys are so mm. they come in they are wearing very nice shoes mm. they have jackets mm. they have colognes mm. they have capes and mm. stuff mm. you all want to be that mm. you know and they have the guns they have the guns you want to you want mm. to be that you know and 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 I see that mm. um um then the next level is um the makangas mm. and the drivers of mm. the matatus and the rest of it mm. second role models mm. um i mean krogosho is sort of like the host community for the Nairobi dump site mm. um and the dump site is if there's a cattle infested mm. thing it's how the dump site works mm. um and it's sort of like a metaphor on Nairobi works because mm. all the problems in Nairobi ends up in mm. in 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 the dump site mm. and so all industrial waste um all all you know waste in the homes mm. um factories and the rest end up in this place mm. and so very so often Mm. Uh, you find someone walking around with an entire syringe with blood mm. you know wow. and in the community yeah, you know and and you know don't know what that thing had mm. you know uh, surgical equipment mm. they are in people's homes mm. all right corogosho mm. you know um and and we find these things you know uh, i remember these you know periods where things were happening um because then this dump site feeds mm. the community mm. so you had nas I don't know if you know nas mm. uh the guys who the Robbie airport service yes from the airport service yeah. so every food that is thrown from the airports mm. and stuff mm. you know gets to korogosho mm. you know i remember seeing it for the first time mm. like the the the, the sachets mm. of uh, of of milk and stuff mm. where else did i see these things the first mm. time you know it was nine this is mm. what i see so i ate airport food before mm. i could go anywhere else <laughs> you know from this stuff yeah um this uh food from hotels and things that mm. you know leftovers what i've left mm. it gets there mm. you know we eat mm. it mm. you know we don't know any better in mm. fact it's better food that you've ever seen mm. um and there was a whole industry around that like, it's a whole, it's a whole industry that's something it's, it's it's a whole cartel because mm. uh, for us to fix those things mm. and because generally as Nairobians, we don't care where my waste goes mm. i'll drive my car through things around and mm. what not mm. i don't care mm. uh, it ends up somewhere mm. all right ends up creating a complete new industry mm. um, and then we've cemented it now it's it's almost impossible for us to solve it mm. and and the only way to solve it is to start from the end mm. not the beginning mm. you know so you know thank god for everyone who's you know cleaning the streets doing whatever they're doing mm. but it's complete zero act you have to start I remember this uh, this at when I, my first interaction with Korogosho was in 2013 uh when i met father with booster yes. i'm sure you know yeah um and 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 we walked we walked through we met some friends um uh and then one of those friends got me an, arti- an artifact which he sold me for 200 it's mm-hmm. like some brass something that had come from an asian family mm-hmm. and i put it on facebook on the expatriates market mm-hmm. i sold it for six thousand shillings you owe us a lot of money as as as, as, as you yeah. owe us a lot of money because yeah. that thing was not really it's not broken. known but i think yeah, this yeah. point didn't even know where to store no, it so it no. just ends yeah, up yeah. in yeah, yeah. In, yeah. The, in the dump site exactly mm. so so yeah so the, there's a lot of those things in in Korogosha. like i said the host community for the dump site mm. um so we know quite a lot about how nairobi lives mm. and how the outside world lives because mm. everything is dumped there mm. you know and so there's an entire community on how to collect that mm. sort that mm. and and sell that mm. Um, you speak about gangs, the biggest fights that we've seen, you know, like World Wars, you know, mm. the Mungiki mm. um, versus Kamjesh. Mm. I don't know if you know about mm. these gangs. Yeah, yeah. Um, somewhere in, in the 90s, uh, because of just the bust of youth and people in there, mm. you know, organizing the, 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 the dump site, mm. um, people grow, young people grow, mm. and they start growing outside this, sort of the burgeon outside the... The, the slum mm. and so they go to the matatu roots mm. and so start managing mm. the matatu roots mm. and managing the trucks that get in the dump site mm. and then what happened was these guys took over the entire of nairobi mm. somehow mm. because they're just uh, many mm. um and they had tools mm. and they're just very well connected and they had nothing to lose and they're nothing to lose so they mm. came and took over the entire of nairobi mm. and so the entire nairobi started paying 
taxes mm. to these mm. our guys in court mm. called Kamjesh. Mm. And I don't really understand what was happening. Mm. But then they're also being used by politicians because mm. they're just a very active force. Mm. You know, they're just young people who have mm. a lot of energy mm. and know how to get money. Mm. And in the intervening period between some of the 90s and the 2000s, mm. another force from outside mm. called Mugiki mm. shows up. Mm. So Nairobi becomes this contested place mm. about two gangs mm. who are very well connected mm. um, with very many youths, mm. possibly tens of thousands of youths mm. who have nothing else to do other than fetching and fending for themselves mm. from the streets. Mm. And this war ensues for almost three to four years. Mm. Um, I remember some many, many Many people disappeared. Mm. People that I knew, mm. people that were, you know, they were either in Kamjesh. Mm. But see, the profile is this: if you grew up in those places, mm. you end up as one of those things. Mm. You know, mm. there's nothing else to do other than mm. be part of the community. Mm. Be part of the community means you have to fend for yourself. Mm. And many people disappeared. Mm. You know, names of people that I know. I just we're told, oh, that person was found in this place by Mungiki, and he was cut into small pieces. We don't even find mm. the the bodies here. Mm. The other person who went to Mungiki was found by Kamjesh in this place. Mm. You know, they took him out. Yeah, they took him out and killed him. And that happened in three, four years. Mm. And a host of all those youth mm. disappeared. You know, killed uh, by the two gangs. Mm. Before much later, mm. the police came mm. to clear the gang that won, mm. which was Mungiki. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that is is a constant thing, and 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 mm. and and it happens a lot. It still happens today. Maybe yeah, I think to that's that's you're answering a lot of questions I've had at a personal level. Uh, around because when, when I interacted with Poragosha for the first time in 2013, and I remember walking in, in uh, down there to, with Father Webusta to where he used to live, which was one of the it's called, it's in Grogon, yeah, it's called Grogon area, Grogon, yeah, one yes. of the most dangerous corners. Yes, and then in that neighborhood also was uh, what she told me was like if you if you go to any club in the city you find a stripper, whether they are the cheap, uh, you know, they the cheapest clubs or the most expensive clubs. Yes. They come from Krogosha. They come from Krogosha, yes. And then you're talking about, um, and, and, and they would live at, at five in the evening, you yeah. know, motorbikes would come and pick them and yeah. distribute them ac- across the city. Yeah. That was one. But when I was growing up, my first interaction also with uh, with clubs uh, for the 2000, you know, that you find all these Borana ladies they come from Korogosho. Yeah. And, and, you know, they, and some of them would wear buibuis coming to, to the city yeah. and then... Yeah, and remove them. And then go, go yes. to, to that space. So, the, so the, and then that thing of um, say the single mothers, so yeah. no fathers. Yeah. And then these young men growing up without fathers. Yeah. Uh, you guys growing yeah. up without fathers. Yeah. Uh, with your grandmothers. And um, it's a very, very... Um, especially the, the Kiku side, there's a lot of... It's, it's a woman-driven... Mm. community mm. was sad. Mm. Then the, the the young boys now grow up and yeah. become the men, but they've mm. had no no influence uh, from the fathers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and the I guess the gangs now become the family. Yeah, becomes a thing. Yeah. Um, I, I so I don't think we we can't blame the parents who stayed, mm. regardless of what yeah, yeah. happened. No, it's not so, so 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 the yeah. mothers yeah. Um, and the women mm-hmm. did absolute the best of the good yeah. they're trying to survive yeah. all right and, mm. and like i said this is the profile of that community mm. um and and because of how that setup was mm. uh, and the impermanence of that situation is mm. most of the time they were working mm. you know they're going out mm. now they're, more, they're the ones who wash your clothes mm. wash your homes and whatnot it's a very tasking job mm. you know uh, and how much do you pay them 500 mm. or a yeah. thousand bob mm. you know that's, and that's, that's today now. And that's today. Then, then yeah, to then, days, it yeah. was 200, 300. Yeah, to yours. Mm. Or even less. Yeah. Mm. So imagine that situation of someone who has to work every single day. Mm. Uh, a woman has to leave her home. Mm. She goes and to work. She's walked for hundreds of kilometers. Let's say, go to Ngara, for instance. Mm. Yeah. And, and Parklands, Westlands, mm. which is where most homes would be where they could work. Yeah. Mm. And stay there for the whole and morning. Walking distance, and walking. Yeah. So she's yeah. tired first. Yeah. She gets the job. Mm. She cleans up the house. Mm. She's get paid a hundred book, mm. all right? So she has to walk back, mm. okay? She has three children back at home. Mm. Um, one has to be a co-parent mm. because of that situation, right? Mm. In between, she has to walk. She has to get burgers mm. and whatnot to get prepare meal, mm. all right? She gets home maybe 7 or 8 p.m. Mm. Prepare meal, kids, mm. fast asleep. Mm. Tomorrow morning, repeat process. Mm. Wake she has up, to, prepare kids. Yes. Those who go to school. Who, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. So who's doing the parenting? Mm. It's kids are parenting themselves. Kids are parenting themselves, mm. right? So that is what has happened with that slum, and I think many other slums. Mm. Yeah, mm. that that because of 
that community setup, mm. we and and I can see the same with Kayole, where the gangs came about. I think in the two thousands, mm. the Gaza gang and the stuff. I could I could see, I could almost tell you that's mm. what happened. There are many parallels. Yeah, yeah. There, there's there's just a situation I've created where parents cannot be at home. Mm. Okay, mm. Uh, and and I I don't think we ask, we, we we've sort of realized how important this is mm. for the an adult mm. to help a child mm. through many things. And mm. it's not just about being at home mm. and helping with homework. Mm. No, no, no. It's just about mm. the presence of an adult. The emotional support. Yes, it's just in the house, mm. right? Mm. Um, it curtails many things. Mm. In the slums, that is not an option. It's removed, mm. okay? You're living in one room, mm. all of you. Mm. So if you're four or five, mm. the typical house in, 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 in a slum has about five or six people, mm. right? It's a tiny room. Mm. That's it. Mm. So there's a small curtain mm. that separates the bedroom mm. where possibly the parents are sleeping. Mm. And then where there's a sofa and on a table mm. uh, during the day, at night we transform it mm. into a bedroom bed, yeah. because you have to put things on top and mm. you know push the sofa on this on, on the on the on the side, mm. then create a space in between. Mm. Then in the morning we very quickly return the place into mm. how it was, transform mm. it back into a sitting area, mm. and then we have to leave. So this the, the profile of a person who lives in this kind of home doesn't have a home. Mm. You always have to be outside mm. because that's a very tiny space. Mm. Okay. And then there's no light, there's no ventilation. No, 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 no. I mean, so part of the biggest um, things that take out people is, mm. you know, TB, mm. you know, uh, bronchitis mm. and, and that kind of diseases because um, there's just no ventilation at all. You're cooking you know? with the yeah. guys firewood sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Yes, trash really. from uh, everything, everything uh, else. Uh, so, yeah, this this compound the healthcare. Yes, uh, that's a big problem. Uh, um, but there is no home for that person. Uh, they have to find a home outside uh, uh, because I think it's a human human thing. We all have uh, to find peace somewhere, uh, you know. Um, and for whatever reason, uh, people find peace in in gangs. Uh, they would find peace in prostitution. They would uh, find peace in I don't know. Theft. I don't mm. know. Mm. Uh, I, I I find it very difficult to judge people mm. uh, whose society has condemned um, into nothingness mm. and doesn't see them, um, hasn't created, even attempted to create mm. um, a roadmap to recognize them. Mm. You know, I, I find it very difficult. Mm. You know, I, I empathize. I sympathize. Mm. I mean, it's not an option that I took, mm. but I empathize with 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 all these kids, mm. and and I feel part of the biggest problem we have a society today mm. is we create these things and say these are problems of God. Mm. You know, it's someone else's problem, not mm. a failure of policy. Mm. Uh, it's not a failure of governance in any way. It's mm. just a, it's just God. Mm. And so the next thing we have, there's a lot of churches. Mm. We have mosques. We have a lot of these things. Mm. Um, because the human spirit is the same. Mm. We need to find hope. Someone someone will sell us hope. We need to find something to to say my situation today mm. um, can be better, mm. right? And religion does a fantastic you job for that. On, on, on these are. Yes, maybe mm. the next one. Mm. You know, maybe I'm suffering now, but in when I die, I will mm. end up in a good place. Mm. Uh, for whatever it's worth, the religion then then does that. So mm. in the next profile is you have uh, after every two houses you have a church, mm. you know, a small church mm. um, that you know just sells hope, mm. you know. And if that's the only thing that is there, then that's in, that is there. Mm. So, in, in many ways, um, yes, I am unable to blame the people in the community for mm. everything that happens in the community. Mm. I, I just can't do. Which most of us do. Um, you know, like we profile and then we say, you know, uh, those people are like that because you know they don't they don't they, they don't work hard enough or they vote the way they vote. Or they do whatever. How does James Smart survive that? How does James Smart go from you know uh, primary school end up in high school? How is that a story? I'm not sure if survival. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I think I think there's um, there's something called yeah. I think the the bias uh, of, of of failure. Mm. All right. Um, so we like looking at success and, and try to find footprints of successful yeah. people or successful things and say, mm. let's model around this. Uh, I don't think I have any of that. Mm. Uh, I, I think... We look for poster boys and guys. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so I, 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 I think there's a huge element in, in life mm. that is about luck, mm. right? And, and um, 
first, I think I have to, I, 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 if I'm very honest, I think I was lucky, quite lucky, mm. um, that certain things uh, came natural to me. Mm. When, when I was young, like I said, I wanted to be a storyteller. So I remember going to, I was in class three, mm -hmm. uh, walked to, to my class teacher. She was called Miss Mudoni and asked her, what do you have to do for you to be a journalist? Mm -hmm. Because what happened over the weekend mm -hmm. was, um, we're living next to Nairobi River mm -hmm. and the river burst its seams at night. Mm -hmm. um, took off a couple of homes. Mm -hmm. So people that I knew that our friends, mm -hmm. some died mm -hmm. that evening. Mm -hmm. And what happens in the Nairobi River is we there's these small pipes, mm. this, this pipe, the water pipe mm. that connects between the industrial areas. Mm. So one that connects from the industrial area on the east mm. to the north. Mm. And so this pipe has to pass water. Mm. So it pass, passes through the, the village. Mm. And so this pipe is what that we use as a bridge. Mm. It's a tiny little thing and mm. it's very slippery. Mm. And so every time it rains, mm. what happens is because people have to cross, mm. they're using it as a bridge. Mm. So every morning what would happen is people would go mm. and start walking over this thing mm. um, and some would flip mm. and it's gone. Wow. So that is a dead person and mm. we start funeral arrangements immediately. Mm. Sometimes body cannot be found. Um, but this time it took off that pipe, mm. you know, and so people couldn't go to work so they had to like really go around and made the trip to going to work, which was already long, mm. much longer. Mm. And so I remember this time, these journalists uh, came through and started taking pictures mm. of what had happened. Mm. And that I started picking out at that time, reading the paper mm. because my grandfather was an office messenger. Mm. Uh, and so our idea of bonding was him coming at mm. home, mm. Um, having made nothing mm. because he was a believer on entrepreneurship and mm. whatnot. Mm. And really at that early, somewhere in the early 90s, thought that it's possible to transform the motorbike as a business, mm. you know, so don't have to be employed as an office messenger. You can just go through and pick all your letters, mm. drop all your whatnot. Mm. And he didn't make it, you know, he just told you're crazy, mm. you know, just stop. Mm. That will never work. Mm. Not in this world or even mm. the next one. And so the only thing was, which was his bread and butter was um, carrying newspapers. So he'd come mm. with the newspapers mm. and would start reading and started reading the newspapers and mm. um, started to teaching me how to read. Community. Yeah, yeah, to me, yeah. to me. And started teaching me how to read. Mm. And then over a period of time, I start picking up reading, mm. he would bring the papers and then mm. ask me to read mm. and then tell him what has happened, mm. sort of give him context of what has happened mm. with what I've read. Um, so I started picking up the news in that sense, mm. based just on him. And, mm. and I, sus I suspect for him, based on his situation, he was disconnected with what was happening politically mm. in the country. Mm. And so he needed to keep abreast with it mm. and understand what was happening everywhere mm. uh, because the only thing he could find was papers. Mm. And so when these things had happened, I picked up quickly that this would going to happen. It's going to show up in the news somewhere. Mm. Mm. Um, so these journalists came, took pictures, took videos, mm. um, wrote notes, and then they left. Mm. And I was told they came from, you know, one of their mm. publications. Mm. Um, and every day for the next week, I looked for this paper. Mm. Every single day. Mm. Our story was not... Was, it was not featured. It, was, it wasn't covered. Mm. Eventually, when I found it, mm. it was covered in um, over the weekend mm. and it was something called in other news we mm. have it on the paper mm. and it was like a strip like this mm. like usually I think we were less than 25 words mm. less than 24 words mm. and it says in other news um, residents of Korogosho slums um, you know fear X number of people dead mm. and property of unknown value mm. you know was well, destroyed mm. full stop and just a footnote Yes, that made me really angry. I was very confused. Mm. I was like, I, I don't think that's us. It, it hasn't represented who we are. I, mm. I thought there was more about us than just that mm. thing, mm. you know. Um, and the way they described us was such, you know, like there's so many things happening elsewhere in the world mm. and us, you don't mean anything. Mm. And, and for me, I think in that time, I was like, that doesn't compute, doesn't seem to make sense. Mm. So I remember going to school and asking, I want to do this. Mm. And she didn't know much, mm. but she said, you know, what you need to do is you need to read a lot a lot of storybooks mm. so that you know how to write mm. and and that sort of thing and so that's what i picked up mm. you know and perhaps that's the only thing i think it's not based on luck mm. that then connected much later mm. all right mm. i do not want to say i have a formula for success mm. i do not have any mm. um there are many who has stayed with the same class mm. for eight years mm. better than me perhaps mm. they, they're not here mm. all right um, many I went to high school with, campus with, 
they're not here, mm. right? So I don't think I have any formula of success. Mm. Um, I think there's a huge element of luck. Mm. Um, I think I chose what I chose. I chose a journey mm. and I kept at it. Mm. Um, and, and here we are. Mm. So you, you left uh, teacher Mudoni and others? Yes. High school? Yes. What did you so we so went to high school, went to mm. Western. Mm. Um, again, by, by huge chance. Mm. Went to St. Paul's. Mm. Um, was another experience that's mm. out of this world. The seminary? Yes. The, yes. The St. Paul's yes. seminary? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes. How did you end up there? Um, I think it's going to be a chance. Mm. All right. Mm. It's a huge chance. Mm. Um, I, I think... Like I said, I think I connect this way, these two things in this way, that mm. every time I came to this sort of organized society, mm. so we call this society, organized society, because yeah. ours was very unorganized. Right. Um, every time I came to this organized society, I picked out something. Mm. All right? I picked out that um, people want um, something. So mm. my thing with high school and campus was I picked out that people are very fearful mm. of, of a future and are looking for certainty a lot. Mm. So everyone that I sat with, especially the kids that we went to school with, mm. they, they really wanted certainty with the future, mm. all right? And everything had to be almost correct, mm. you know? I saw how hectic their parents were hustling them. Mm. You need to get the grades. You need to do this. You know, I've paid all the school fees. Mm. I mean, I was being chased from school fees all the time, yeah. you know? Yeah. And so uncertainty is something that I'm quite happy with. Mm. I'm, I'm home. A yes. certainty in permanence. Yes, I'm, mm. I'm quite at home with it. Mm. Right? Um, so it's 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 thing that then, in a way, um, has made me not worry about the day-to-day things people need to do in life mm. because we have this thing to do, all right? Because I was, I was born out of uncertainty. I'm mm. quite comfortable with chaos, you know, as a concept. I know the, the <laughs> funny side note in that is that if you li- read a lot of uh, motivation books, they tell you not to worry about the future. So you are gifted that by 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 chance. By chance, yes, mm. huge chance. Mm. Yeah. So so yes, it, people worry about the future. Mm. You know, quite often. Mm. You know, what will happen tomorrow? Um, we need to get these these things connect with that one. And and, and mm. those things are important. Mm. Not to belabor the point. Mm. Um, should think about those things. Mm. But so what if there's chaos? Mm. So what? Mm. What 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 if? Everything is so impermanent. Mm. So we have to deal with it, mm. right? Mm. So what if everything is dark? Mm. You have to learn how to live in darkness, mm. you know. Um, and so throughout, I, I think I've learned how to be helpful mm. to people. Mm. I, I, I was in, you know, in Korgosho, um, working with communities and helping young people mm. in, in, in homework, mm. you know, playing games. Mm. I picked out things very quickly. I think one of the things that also Helping got, your grandmother yes. with, the, with the light. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah, it, it sort of came natural to me. Mm. Helping people is a natural thing for me. Mm. Um, I've, I picked out, you know, playing tennis, table tennis, yeah. uh, basketball, mm. football, mm. Um, do all those things. Mm. I went to drama, mm. you know, did yeah, all these things. Mm. Um, and for me, why was I doing all those things? Mm. It was because the organized society... Uh, and people come from that organized society mm. thought those things were by the way. Mm. For me, it's the first time I'm seeing a stage. Mm. I'm like, friends, mm. this is a stage. Mm. You know. Where, where is this? Where is this? Yes. No, no, I'm saying like it's, it's high school or campus, right? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, you know, if you, if if we are doing a play, for mm. instance, mm. um, many people take it as it's a by the way. Mm. It's, for me, it's not. Mm. It's, it's the thing that I'm seeing for the first time. Mm. I remember the first time walking into school and seeing a table tennis. Mm. And I'm like, fascinating mm. and pick it up mm. within three months i was the best in school mm. all right mm. um in another year i was second third top in mm. western mm. province mm. and that that was good so i proved the point mm. and then i moved on something else but how did you end up in st paul's yeah uh, so, so, is it because of uh, your grandmother's so so so, so 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 these these two things no no so there's mm. there's grades and of course then there's mm. um catholic mm. the, the catholic school i mm. i i Oh, so much to, I mm. think, the organized, like I said, uh, the Catholic thing that we saw first in mm. Korogosho. Mm. Um, I don't know if you met, there was a guy called Father John. He's an Italian. I've heard about him. Yes, and, and Father John, uh, what he did was, was I think, a few things. One was he tried to make the community feel this is home. Mm. And so he lived in the community. He was the first priest to live mm. in the community. Mm. All the rest were living. Yeah. He was mm. in there. Mm. 
Um, and the the second thing that he did was he became very close, I think, with the young people. Mm -hmm. Because like I told you, the, the role model of many other people was mm -hmm. what you see. So he tried to find a new model. Mm -hmm. And so he picked up talented younger people and tried to show them things. And mm -hmm. the first ones that I remember, I didn't participate in because mm -hmm. I think I was quite young. Mm -hmm. um, he was taking young people from the community to uh, go to protest in town, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and connect them with what's happening nationally, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And they would come back and they would mm -hmm. say all these interesting things about how the city looks. Mm -hmm. Like I said, Korokocha is quite far. Yeah, you know it's really, really far. So mm -hmm. we didn't have an opportunity to, to get to the city a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, this, going to the city center was an entire activity. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like going to the states. Mm -hmm. You know, it's very yeah. far. Yeah. So, so these guys, when they went out first and said, "Oh, by the way, this is how the city looks." Mm -hmm. You know, you know, a lot of tall buildings. Um, you know, fascinating lights and mm -hmm. whatnot. We listened, and it inspired these are people like toothbrush i think because exactly yeah 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 so they yeah. yeah so the toothbrush and all those years yeah, yeah. so they, mm. they then they, Baraza. yeah they participated yeah. then became um part of what civil society was building in the 90s mm. had a huge component was happening in Korogosho because mm. those young people um were well, they, they sort of had their consciousness opened up and mm. they would go out mm. and participate in, in in these things in the mm. civil society spaces they became quite eloquent mm. in what they were saying and what they were doing mm. find their spaces and then all of a sudden it mm. created a different column of a role model. Mm. You're like, hmm, mm. I can actually do that. Mm. I see what she's doing and what they're doing. Mm. Um, and then they inspired this generation of artists, mm. you know, and Korogosha is a big place for art. Mm. Um, you know, the next generation of, I think, sportsmen and women, mm. um, and I think academics, mm. you know. Mm. So based on those things, I think then it's not difficult for looking for that formula mm. to see how some mm. people found mm. a different model, mm. right? Mm. Uh, through how to live life other mm. than mm. what the society had created and confined mm. us to. Mm. So all of a sudden people could go out, people could travel, mm. you know. I never knew anyone who left this country uh, until maybe I think somewhere in the mid 90s or something. Mm. The first guy went to the US, mm and then to Italy, mm. and become a whole communal conversation because mm. we were not supposed to be the ones who made it. And we, these are guys most probably who haven't even gone to the city. No. Or maybe they, once or twice. No, they yeah. didn't go to the city. The first trip they did was to the airport, mm. you know. Um, and, and so, mm. because they were not supposed to make it, we were not supposed to make it, and one person made it, all of us saw a path. Yeah. And we were like, we'll take that. Mm. We will, we'll take the slimmest chance, mm. and we will try and, and, and get through it. Mm. Um, and like I said, I think it would be unfair to judge everyone mm. through this slim chance that yeah, does not yeah, exist, yeah. right? Um, like I said, I think I don't know people who work extremely hard mm. than the people who live in 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 um, in Korogosho. Mm. Uh, I'll speak about Korogosho, not about haters. Mm. You know, um, people work very hard. So this just just another take me to was that one of the things that was fascinating for me uh, when we were walking around with Father Wibusa and I met you know different guys, gangs especially. Um, so the power of the gang, first of all, right. uh, like the chief was totally powerless. It was just a, a fixture there. Mm. But also it's talking to these young men, mostly. Um, and, and, and meeting this particular young man, he's, he's not young. I think he was in his 30s. He was a retired, retired, you know. Gang leader. Gang leader. He, yes. had, he, had, he had been yeah. everywhere. Mm. Done his bits. Uh, traveled, you know, his route was Mombasa, Malaba Road, just robbing trucks and that kind of thing, going into Uganda, Rwanda. Yeah. But he had never been to the city. Yeah. He had been out, done his thing, and then come and settled. Yeah. And there were all these people who, to them, the city, crossing their road, outering, going into that other side of yeah. Rose, and no, no. Yeah. As you're saying, it's far. Yeah, Kogosha is far. So the city is not our thing at all. <laughs> the, the only way I know people who has, a person who's come from Korogosho is if they have a very good knowledge of the city, mm. they're, they're not ours, mm. for sure. Yeah. You know, because city is not ours. It's yeah. not our thing at yeah. all. Mm. It's too far. Um, and maybe we develop an attitude yeah. around it. We're like, mm. Ah. Mm. since the city doesn't want us, yeah. we also don't want it. So we've created a line. Yeah, mm. You don't cross us, we don't cross you. Wow. Um, but to your point, mm. um, I think the... The, the profile of what you're talking about of mm. of the of the people and who are in there and the gangs and you know members of how we've created that place yes the chief and everyone else are very powerless mm. there's only so much you can do mm. like i said even the, the system is so disconnected mm. 
uh, in there. Mm. That if anything happens, like I remember, like give you an incident. I think somewhere, maybe 96, 97, mm. there was a com- communities who are just before the elections, mm. as they always are, communities um, sort of get activated. Mm. So this is when people realize, oh, I'm a Kikuyu. Mm. Oh, I am Luo. Mm. Oh, I am Borana, whatever mm. it is. So that mm. get activated. Mm. And so there was an incident. I think um, a, a young man from one of the community um, crossed over into this side and was accused of stealing mm. something. Mm. And this community uh, killed that young man mm. from this community. Mm. Now, this incidents and infractions happen all the time. Mm. Okay. All the time. Because our community people do certain things. Mm. But that community that the young man came from mm. organized a day, all of them, mm. to come to this community because how this Korgocho is set up is people live inside communities. Yeah. So we, Grogon, for instance, is known for certain community. Mm. High Ridge, certain community. That sort of thing. Mm. So these people left from their the invisible boundaries. Is, yeah, 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 mm. yeah, yeah. You just don't go and live randomly there, mm. you know. Uh, so they came, um, went to school, and one morning killed like 50 people. Mm. You know, with pangas, machete, because these other guys were unprepared of mm. what's happening. Mm. You know, they didn't know. Mm. Um, so we're in school. Mm. Yeah. The next day, this community counterattacked. That was Yeah. Mm. Goes, killed, I think, another 30 or so from mm. this other thing. Mm. No, when you're in school, first you didn't know when this is happening. Mm. You're in high school, that's it. Not in primary school. In primary school. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And we just hear that. Mm. This entire corrugation, the, everyone is there, the police and everyone is there, you know, mm. these, you know, tear gas and mm. gunshots. Mm. It's literally like you can see the whole thing, like, you know, mm. the flames coming up because they are burning houses mm. and stuff. Mm. Um, and so I remember I'm sitting there, I'm like, but what community am I? Because mm. then I was very confused because now I need to plan my route. Mm. How am I going to walk past this thing? Back home, yeah. You know, because mm. now it's a mess, mm. you know. And all of us live. Mm. Um, Teachers can't do much. Mm. They release you from the gate. Mm. Um, and everyone makes a mental note. Mm. These are kids. Mm. We all made mental notes on how to up, get into the community. You know, mm. I took the long route mm. because I was like, because I'm not sure about these warring communities mm. and even not community am I. Mm. I'd rather walk like people were coming from work mm. later in the evening. Mm. And if there's chaos or whatever it is, mm. I send a better chance. Others who are sure from where they came from, they approached uh, their community first and got in. And I remember walking home that morning, uh, that evening, um, and you pass through dead bodies, um, and you see how people are looking at you, you know. Like they're trying to judge. They're trying to see, uh, like, what are you? Like, mm. are you ours or not? Mm. And because it's a route that you don't use every day, mm. they're not sure what you are, mm. you know, so they let you pass, you know, because mm. you're a kid with a bag and a, mm. and a uniform. So mm. they let you pass. Um, and I pass, and you walk, and the most dangerous I felt were the cops. Mm. You know, they were gangs. Each mm. community has a gang. Mm. Um, they gave me a bit of fear, mm. but the cops, mm. the cops were beating everyone. Mm. You know, they were, had one uniform, and when the cops saw us, you know, they threw a tear gas. Mm. You know, and yeah, the kids. Yeah. Mm. So we had to run back. Mm. You know. Mm. But I was like, I've just passed gangs with knife, mm. you know, wielding pangas and things back there. Mm. You know, why would you do that? Mm. You know. Um, but eventually then we get home. Yeah. But it's probably just because they're also afraid. No, they're afraid mm. because they don't know this community. They don't know anyone. Anyone can attack them. Mm. You know, because they don't know the profile of this place mm. and people. Like I said, this is not Madare, this is not Kibra. Mm. Kibra is quite clear, mm. you know. What's what and who's who? Mm. In Madari, pretty much the same. Mm. In Korogosho, you don't know. You know, mm. everyone is peaceful, everyone is fine mm. until something happens. Mm. You know, then everyone is not. Mm. So the, I think in terms of uh, to your point, going to your earlier point, mm. in terms of how the authorities are unable to understand these places mm. or this space, I think provides a bigger avenue for much bigger discussion. Mm. That our policy failures uh, begin with people we put in office that completely misunderstand us. Mm. Uh, they don't know who we are. Mm. And they're there because, you know, either they came from famous families uh, or somehow they have a lot of money, mm. you know. And then you put our trust and faith and hope to these people mm. who 
with all due respect, mm. I think most of them are below average. Mm. You know, and I refuse to uh, today, even today, to bow down to people that I can't trace how they got to where they got. Mm. You know, why should you be like I've seen, I've seen you on Twitter. You don't hold back. Me? <laughs> <laughs> you know, on your, on your personal Twitter. Huh? Um, so, I, I think, personally, what mm. I, I, I prefer to do, so first, I, I don't speak for anyone. Mm. I speak for myself, mm. all right? Uh, not my employer. Uh, I don't speak for my community. I don't. I, I speak for myself. Mm. And the reason I think that's important for me is um, that I represent myself because I've grown up in these areas. Mm. I know uh, what poverty looks like. Uh, what it's not. There's a smell of poverty. Mm. You know, there's smell of poverty, uh, and and even how poverty sounds. Um, I, I I I don't think you ever forget those things. Mm. They come back to you. You mm. dream of them every so often. Mm. Um, I dream of our little home in High Ridge, being Korogosho, mm. every so often. Mm. Um, I wake up from dreams in there. Mm. And so, I don't think I owe it to anyone to be politically correct. Mm. You know, mm. so I'll say the truth. I will say it in ways that I see it. Mm. And I'm sorry if it hurts you. Mm. But am I really sorry? Mm. It's, it's, not as, yeah. it's what it is. It is what it is. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, mm. I, I'll always speak my mind. Um, and... and whether I, it's gainful employment or not, I'm going to speak my mind. Mm. All right, um, that's that's that. Secondly, I think there's a huge, huge population of younger people mm. uh, who are behind us, um, and I think we owe it to them mm. uh, to be forthright mm. and and just say, look, um, you need to have enough in your tank to to be honest and speak truthfully. Mm. Uh, if you have an opportunity to own a platform then you owe it to us, mm. you know, and I think we should do that more. I think the previous uh, generation that was before us, um, maybe they were dealing with many things. Mm. They didn't take that a lot. Mm. You know, they, they, they're quite... It's actually my generation. Yeah. Um, what happened to you guys? We, were, we became pacifists um, because the generation ahead of us was the Uhuru, Kenyatta, and the other generation. Yeah. People of dreams, people who did things, who made money out of you know thin air. We don't we really do know what they they did, you know. Uh, and it's the guys you're talking about, people who knew other people. Yeah. So you you get a, a government tender, and then all of a sudden you're fabulously wealthy, uh, and you show off. And then everybody wants those are now the role models that yeah. we wanted to aspire to be. Yeah. Uh, and I think that we need to, of course, all become that, um, but also. Uh, I think the classist uh, nature of our society, whereby if, even when you're suffering, you don't show. No. Um, even if you come from the slum, once you once you make cross the road, yeah, you pretend that you come from that side. Yeah, yeah. You know, you yeah. never you never tell the story like yeah. the story we are having. Yeah. yeah. Um, and 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 it's it's um it's it's a very pretentious. My generation is very pretentious. Mm. Uh, you would think all of them were born in Lavington, or <laughs> or you know? uh, and we try to maintain yeah. those appearances. Right and, right, and part of it is personally, I think I've committed class suicide mm. uh, to be able to to have this kind of conversations because they don't, and they are running mm. this country. You know? They are the directors in government. They are the directors in uh, you know uh, all these uh, blue chip companies and that kind of thing, but they've shut themselves off. Uh, what is really happening in this country. And I think part of this conversation is to try and for yeah. me remedy that. Like let's be real. Yeah. Let, let's be real and be honest. Um yeah, I mean I, I think you're right. I think no one wants to to do the work of going back um to attempt to remedy those things. We have not created and you're right. Um if someone today uh wants to live in this country they go to the same supermarket that like you do. Mm. They buy stuff like you do. You pay them, I don't know, 5,000 or 9,000 kind of shillings a month. Mm. How do you imagine that person is living? Mm. Okay, but we do that, all right? Our watchmen, we pay them not more than 15,000. Mm. In every place that we go in, where you live, mm. 
in 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 offices and mm. plus you know mm. where do you imagine mm. you know so because we want to shut that out you're like mm. that's not my problem mm. i as a person who rents this you know apartment mm. i pay x amount mm. it's it's the landlord's problem mm. okay so we don't want to participate in community mm. and how we expand space for all of us mm. it's all about me you know so as long as me I can pay school fees for my children. Mm. I can pay for my rent. I can pay for my car. Mm. I am fine. Mm. So that we're very individualistic, mm. in a sense. To your point, as a class, mm. then I can only relate with people who are on the same level, mm. you know. Um, and because it's so difficult to mm. open this discussion, I mean, it's how many of us? Yeah, how many of us have a discussion of yeah. how much your watchman actually takes home? Mm. Don't because, like, if I open that can, it's a problem, right? But the guy takes fifteen thousand. Where they live, you see them in the morning. They have to walk. Mm. They have to walk mm. uh, kilometers to get to the place to open the gates for us. Mm. Okay, um, and that's a living reality. So if you're going to talk about political consciousness on how we start opening that up, mm. is is us being vulnerable enough to realize that we live in such a violent system and society mm. Mm. that will take all of us out at mm. some point. Mm. And then I progress that. That what happens is when you're gainfully employed. It is fine, or when you have your business and it's doing well, mm. it is fine. But then something happens, as it happens to all of us. Life mm. happens, mm. you know. Who knows mm. when you're going to get sick mm. or get an accident, mm. or something happens. Mm. They need all of us. You need the community and society to show up, mm. right? And then a society will sit back and be like, "Hmm, let's see. Mm. Does Mutemi deserve our collective empesa? Mm. Okay, mm. make a choice and decision. Like, mm. someone will put a post on Twitter, mm. on WhatsApp groups." Then we'll put our 500 bobs and a thousand bobs, mm. and we'll do it once. Mm. We hope that sorts you out. Mm. Okay, if whatever it is that you're dealing with, and we've given you money hasn't sorted you out, mm. then please mm. die in peace. Mm. The next thing we're going to do is for your funeral. Mm. Okay, you can't keep coming back. Mm. Okay, so what's the result of that is all of us creating an unstable system mm. that we don't want to open it up and say how can we discuss mm. healthcare for instance mm. as a collective. Mm. All right. And I said that starts with us caring about things that happen mm. in our own spaces. You mm. know, like I said, just the watchman, mm. all right? Mm. How much does that guy actually earn? Okay. And do you care that this guy earns 15,000 mm. or less mm. and lives in the same society as you mm. and has to go to the supermarket and buy food like you? Mm. Do you care? Okay. So the second one is like, what do we do about it? Then we mm. organize ourselves. Yeah. All right. Mm. And say, no, 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 no. I need to understand all these companies. There are possibly hundred plus companies that have this. It's like, no, 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 guys, we need to discuss. Mm. How much are you getting paid from what we pay mm. to get these guys? Mm. So we discuss that fair wage, if it's possible, right? And then we can open that up into many other ways and mm. schemes. But the fact that we prefer to be individuals mm. and we prefer to be classists, it means we also prefer to die very violent deaths. Mm. Okay. Um, two or three years ago, when uh, Benja, the rugby coach, yeah. um, when he died, um, or when he got into, you know, got sick, and then he died. This is a guy who has done everything for this country. Mm. You know, he's worked with uh, all the rugby kids, uh, trained them. They've gone to, I think, all the series. They've won. I think it's in his time that rugby did very well, if I'm not wrong. Um, but in his point of need, mm. you know, he had to be separated like everyone else. Mm. You know, someone had to put up an impressa mm. and say, our we call them national hero, mm. you know, is going through something, he's an impressa number, blah, 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 mm. and, and start sending him money. Mm. Is that a way for seriously? You know, talk about Utu, that's what you talk about. Like, yeah. what is our humanity? Where, where where is the human in us? And why did we get disconnected at this level? You know, and, and I think the story you've just given about you know growing up in coach. You know, actually, up, up, uh, you know, um, proper illustrates that disconnect. Uh, mm -hmm. The fact that all this is happening in this city, um, just, uh, for example, coach is on one side, Ruruma is on the other side. Yeah. And you have totally different worlds mm -hmm. uh, in that space. Mm -hmm. uh, you go to Isili, you go to Boroboro, yeah. uh, you go to Oboja. All of you are living almost, you know, in um, the same, maybe a distance of uh, a few kilometers from each other. Yeah, but yeah. Yes, there's such difference and there's such disconnect. Like, people don't really care. Coach is just seen by politicians as mm. a pool of uh, votes. 
yeah. where we yeah. come every five years. Right. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, th- I, just, I think about. I think it's, so. The urban, the urban poor, um, bears a lot of brunt of that class society we've created, um, and because we've already agreed that it's an unseen area, we we dump all our problems. To, to the urban poor, so mm. politically, mm. even psychologically, you know, it's the most disorganized places, the places that possibly when there is, you know, a waterborne disease, it would mm. happen there first. So mentally, it, it, it exhausts mm. the society to think, mm. you know, these places exist, mm. you know, and perhaps the best thing that we all want to do is we want to create, you know, flats there one day so that we don't see the slums, right? Um, but, but I think if we take a step back, we that only dislocates the slums, all right? It, the, the slums are a function of economic disposition, mm. right? So the people who live there, if they earn enough, mm. um, if we encourage enterprise, mm. you know, if we allow a society where people can show up and be themselves, be individuals, mm. you know, if they're talented, get opportunities, if they're academically inclined, mm. you know, go to school, if they are, you know, uh, sports and stuff, we have all these things that can make things go. Mm. Um, the slums do not become a problem. And, you know? and there are those things that are happening in the communities. Yeah. There are people who are organizing themselves. You have an organization you set up uh, to mentor young people. Yeah, who's, yeah. Who's, so, 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 yeah. So, mm. what I, what, like I said, so, yeah, that's, that's the slum. So, now, the other is the, the rural poor, yeah. you know, I went to school, you know, in Gary. Mm. Um, one of the things that it's very clear is agriculture. We all... Somehow, mm. for the last 20 or 30 years, mm. we decided agriculture is not a thing, mm. you know. And for during our generation, again, yeah, sorry to interrupt, is that uh, uh, when you're in high school, if you did something wrong, uh, your punishment was to be told to go and <laughs> dig somewhere. Yes. So, agriculture a bad was thing. associated with, yeah, with failure, uh, failure and punishment, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm. Uh, and, and so, for, for whatever reason, I don't think then it's rocket science the problems of this country in mm. terms of production, mm. food prices, and the rest of it. Um, I don't think we are lazy. I think Kenyans are uh, the most hardworking, the most enterprising uh, bunch of people. Yeah, if we judge us going to find East Africa. Mm. Um, but our failure to incentivize agriculture as um, sort of you know, means of production um, has created a creative failure for all of us. You know? So I'll tell you this, like I went to Lugari, and Lugari was supposed to be a forest, all right? And then what happened was, progressively, uh, people started getting in and cutting the trees, mm. okay? Because it became an easier thing to do, mm. all right? Mm. And all the trees were cut off between, between mile Tisa, mm. yes. You know, so if you go, if you know Eldoret, if you know that terrain mm. very well, yeah. past Eldoret, mm. um, which is supposed to be the food basket of this country, if you go to Kitale, mm. uh, if you go further down, you find the Ubuya Pan paper, mm. then Kakamega, and that place. That area is supposed to be the food basket. But then what happened consistently was because this disintervention of agriculture, mm. we went to the next best thing. So guys on the river, River Nzoya, which is a huge river that connects all the way from you know, the plains of the mountains and goes all the way to Lake Victoria, people start doing sand harvesting. Okay? Because building houses and building homes became the biggest thing. So mm. the place that was producing 10 bags of maize became an apartment. Mm. You know, mm-hmm. uh, and that became the thing that we did mm-hmm. consistently. Mm-hmm. So that area stopped production. You know, cut all the trees, and then that happened. So then it's not the people who then could not participate in this economic new economic thing that we created, which was a chance economics, became rural poor, mm-hmm. and they are unable to produce anything. Mm-hmm. You know, they are stuck with the land possible that now is you know um, going to barren. The river is you know shrinking or even drying up. Um, and then so you ask the question then, uh, what do we do with these people who don't have, they don't live in the slums, they only have a quarter of an acre and a small hut, what do you do with that person? Because that's what, we've sold everything else. We've built apartments, we've built things on the side of the road, we've built, uh, you know, shops and many, many things, you know, place that was supposed to be agricultural land um, in name of progress, right? So what do you do with those things and those people? Um, and, and for me, that gets to the next question of then how do we have a sort of a national conversation about um, economic inclusion, you know? Um, and that's not to mean that things can be reversed. It means that we can figure out what to do with 
uh, with ourselves. You know, people in, 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 in Nairobi who would call the urban poor, they have no means of making money through land, mm. you know. But perhaps we can do something else, you know, to incentivize and get these people to participate in the economic. Uh, uh, well, who can buy land here now? Yeah. Uh, here in Karen, uh, an acre is 50, 50 M. Who can buy? That's uh, most of the land in Nairobi is unaffordable to most people, even the wealthy. Yeah, yeah. no, no, can't, can't afford it, you know. Um, so I think the urgent conversation for this country, uh, for me, is, is how do we all participate to be Kenyans, um, active Kenyans, as opposed to being told what kind of Kenya you need to be. You know, we need, we'll give you this, we'll organize this for you, we'll do that for the next person. Um, that hasn't worked, okay? And what's the difficulty of just having an inclusive conversation about mm. our country and as a people, mm. you know. Um, and I think that's the most difficult thing that we are able to do. Mm. Um, and until that happens, then we'll have, we'll have small minds discussion about which community is getting what over what, um, which doesn't get too far, but then becomes the thing that politics organize around, because politicians are very clever in organizing around a pain point um, in absence of anything else. Mm. So, in every new election, they will tell us this is why coalitions are our thing. Because communities, two communities can, can agree that, oh, we can tell our elites in our community that this is our biggest problem. And all of a sudden it becomes a way on how to mobilize and get, you know, um, get results. Mm -hmm.